The increasing adoption of cloud computing solutions will offer robust opportunities for both the market of the forecast period and allow introduction of newer technologies. The use of cloud computing solutions is quickly growing worldwide owing to the lower cost of cloud-based services and the lack of the need to set up separate IT infrastructure. The penetration testing market is predicted to also grow in the near future due to the increasing use of cloud-based solutions and services for multiple workloads be it email, data backups, CRM, and collaborative services. Cloud deployment exposes software to more vulnerability and makes it more accessible to unauthorized users. This is where penetration testing for security testing comes in. With handheld devices seeming to be the primary device of choice for the future, one such framework that facilitates this service is the offensive security back Kali NetHunter. So let's take a look at the topics to be covered in today's video on Kali NetHunter. We start with a small introduction to what Kali NetHunter is, followed by going through the different versions of Kali NetHunter. We then learn about the different components in the Kali NetHunter framework and some of the most helpful attacks or features that are featured in this distribution. Finally, we take a look at the pros and cons of Kali NetHunter as a whole. Before we get started with the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and hit the bell icon to never miss an update again. So let's get started with what is Kali NetHunter. Kali NetHunter is the very first Android penetration testing framework for Android smartphones. Because NetHunter is an open source project, developers can freely utilize it without fearing copyright infringements or other threats. The project grants access to the Kali toolkit to compatible Android devices, which allows penetration testing. Furthermore, NetHunter provides several unique capabilities unavailable on other hardware platforms. A userland refers to space outside of an operating system kernel, meaning anything that doesn't have root access. We can use an app to system supported on Nexus or OnePlus and rooted Android phones. While this is pretty incredible, there are some limitations to this. In general, you can communicate with the instance of whatever Linux device you want via SSH or VNC using Kali NetHunter. The best device for hackers is an Android phone installed by Kali Linux because mobile phones are more convenient and portable than laptops for personal purposes. The NetHunter interface also allows users to work easily with complicated configuration files through a local web Apache interface. Aside from this functionality, modified kernels that handle 802.11 wireless injections and securely link pre-configured VPN services comprise a strong network security breakthrough and a separate Dropbox with Kali Linux constantly at your disposal. We now have a basic understanding of what Kali Linux NetHunter is. However, there isn't a single distribution to learn about here. Kali Linux NetHunter has multiple different versions depending on the device at the hands of the users. Let's cover them in more detail. So let's cover them in more detail. While Kali NetHunter functions as a portable operating system designed for penetration testing, there can be other tools you want that isn't pre-installed. To solve this problem, there is a NetHunter store at the address store.nethunter.com. This function is the same as a Google Play Store on Android or app stores on iPhones. Except the difference is that the tools in this repository are more in line with ethical hacking and network penetration. The first of the three versions that NetHunter provides is the NetHunter rootless. This works on almost all devices without any issues. The number of tools available in this version is the lowest among the three. We then have NetHunter Lite, which requires root privileges to work properly. It doesn't need any custom kernel flashing to power up and has comparatively more tools than NetHunter rootless. Finally, we have the original NetHunter package with all the tools available at its disposal. However, your device must have root privileges and the custom NetHunter kernel to install this version. As we can clearly see, the more open our device settings and preferences are, the more tools Kali NetHunter can work with. Root privileges provide administrative access to many functionalities that NetHunter can leverage and ultimately perform network penetration with. Some rules are exclusive to the original NetHunter core and NetHunter Lite, so you may have to cross-check your requirements before installing any version on your device. 
Now that we have covered the different versions of Kali NetHunter, let us cover its different components and how they help in the working of this distribution. We look at the various NetHunter components, which are effectively the building pieces of NetHunter's operation. NetHunter's ROAM comprises of various pieces that communicate and rely on one another to function properly. Below you will look at the three components that comprise NetHunter. The first is a modified Android kernel, followed by NetHunter Android app, and finally but not least, the Kali Linux CHU itself. Let's examine these in depth. The program that provides a UI to simplify the user's tasks is a graphical component of NetHunter, which is its Android app. The software provides a straightforward interface for controlling the Kali Linux CH root. The fact that it has a simple UI does not imply that it is not capable of performing complex tasks. This application contains all the configuration files necessary by NetHunter and is transferred to the SD card during the first run. Aside from the UI, the program also serves as a boot up service allowing the server to activate when the device boots up. The next in line is the custom Android kernel. The kernel is a system component that allows the applications to link to hardware that meet users' needs. Aside from facilitating communication, the kernel also maintains system resources. Now the default kernels inside Android do not supply at all utilities for security and exploitation. Still, with the custom Android kernel, any device can be empowered with unique features which are not accessible in the stock ones. Now we have the Kali CH root. CH root is essentially a full Kali Linux installation that allows Android to share network, storage, and other resources. The Kali Linux CH root is effectively the heart of NetHunter, and the configuration settings have been updated so that NetHunter functions seamlessly with the Android ecosystem. NetHunter has a CH root manager that simplifies the download and installation of CH root. This component is stored in an internal app storage region and one must meet the installation space requirements. Now that you have covered the different components of Kali NetHunter, let us cover some of the tools that distribution offers that may be used in penetration testing. At the top of the chain lies Nmap. Nmap stands for Network Mapper and is a free and open source utility for network discovery and security auditing. Many systems and network administrators who also find it useful for tasks such as network inventory, managing service upgrade schedules, and monitoring host or service uptime. It is most beneficial in the early stage of exploitation, where a hacker must figure out the possible entry point to a system before running the necessary exploits. It uses raw IP packets in novel ways to determine what hosts are available on the network, what services are being run, what hosts are offering, etc. It was designed to scan large networks, but it also works fine against single hosts. Moving on, we have the MITM framework. MITM or Man in the Merc framework provides a one-stop shop for man in the middle and network attacks while updating and improving existing attacks and techniques. Originally built to address the significant shortcomings of other tools, it's been almost completely rewritten from scratch to provide a modular and easily extendable framework that anyone can use to implement their own version of a man-in-the-middle attack. It contains built-in SMB, HTTP, and DNS servers that can be controlled and used by various plugins. The next tool at hand is the KEX Manager. It stands for the Kali Desktop Experience. Kali NetHunter Desktop Experience puts the Kali Linux desktop in the palm of your hand. It provides the graphical user interface or GUI of Kali Desktop on your Android device, making penetration relatively easier for people not comfortable with the command line. However, the major tools all include command line functions. So this is more of a convenience inclusion rather than a functional one. Finally, we have Metasploit. The Metasploit framework is a very powerful tool that can be used by cyber criminals as well as ethical hackers to probe systemic vulnerabilities on networks and servers. Because it's an open source framework, it can be easily customized and used with most operating systems. With Metasploit, the ethical hacking team can use ready-made or custom code and introduce it into a network to probe for weaker spots. As another flavor of threat hunting, once the flaws are identified and documented, the information can be used to address systemic weaknesses and prioritize solutions. We now have a very clear understanding of what Kali NetHunter is and its features. Let's cover some of the pros and cons of this particular framework. When it comes to the advantages, 
NetHunter provides features that are not by default included in the original kernels of Android phones. The new tools can be used to perform network penetration and system checks for security vulnerabilities. Qualcomm checks and Snapdragon have monitor support enabled. Monitor mode helps listen to wireless traffic and capture data packets, which can then be unencrypted and snooped on. The kernel builder's presence assists the easy creation of kernels that are not yet available to the public. Similarly, the use of GitLab CLI or command line interface speeds up the release timelines. It allows the input of other developers, making the bug squashing process easier and the development of the tools more collaborative. The human interface device hardware is fully supported by default, but it must be enabled and configured through user space controls. So when it comes to the disadvantages of Kali NetHunter, so not every Android phone is supported as part of the official NetHunter release. Therefore, be cautious while downloading and running them since the wrong NetHunter may break the phone in some very rare circumstances. Because some internal Wi-Fi systems do not allow monitor mode or data packet injection, an external USB Wi-Fi adapter may be required for some devices who want to pursue wireless network penetration. Hope you learned something new today. Please let us know in the comments section below if you face any issues regarding Kali NetHunter and we will help you as soon as possible. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.